Hello, welcome to 5 minute software testing tips. Uh, today's topic is Selenium. Uh, this is actually the follow up session of a previous session. We mentioned about uh, page object pattern uh, conceptually from the last uh, video. So I'm just going to go ahead and explain some detailed examples uh, with the Selenium uh, so they can see the difference between uh, page object pattern and non page object pattern. So I'm not sure I can cover that within five minutes, but we will try. So, so here's a little refresher from the last uh, session. So uh, page object pattern is basically using page classes that which actually wraps the the two library that actually uh, interact with the um, browsers or the Android applications. Uh, so it wraps around uh, wrap, this page wraps around this library, and then your test case actually interact only with the page classes. So this test class doesn't, um, doesn't know about uh, this library implementation detail. That's basically the idea. So let's take a look at the code. Okay, so here is the code examples. So I prepared sort of two ways to implement the same scenario. Uh, one is using page of object parent and the other is not using the page object parent. So this is an example where it doesn't actually use the page object parent. So actually, this test case uses a Selenium library directly. Uh, so there, we I prepared like two test cases, very simple test case, uh, which is test login. And the first one, uh, so first thing you need to do is uh, find the elements of uh, uh, this particular ID, and then you send kids means you, you actually typing the uh, this particular. Uh, email address and then you type password same way find the element and then input password and then you send keys That's all it does. The second thing is uh, test login fails uh, Obviously you type username and password and you verify the error message you're actually showing on because you passed the long password so I, I missed the step of uh, I Click on login button, but basically you get the idea, right? So this is the <clears throat> Using the selenium library directly uh, and then I show you the base class. So base class has a, the, the how you instantiating this uh, web driver with the Firefox driver. Uh, I maximize the window and then I go to this particular site. And then I'll just type username and password. So uh, for the implementation detail, you can find a lot of tutorials on, on the web. So I'm just going to skip that part. So now here is a, using page object parent. And the same test case, but basically here what I'm doing is I'm calling page provider to ask, hey, page, uh, page provider, give me the login page instance. And it actually give me an instance, and I type username and password, but the method call by itself says type username, type password, and you know sleep for a while. In the second case, the same thing, login page, give me the instance of the login page, you get the login page instance, type username and type password. And verify error. So I missed the uh, click on login page. I guess uh, same scenario, right? So um, uh, for this case, uh, it'll be a similar on the base class. What the difference is, you instantiating uh, Firefox driver, and then you pass this driver to a page provider, right? So page provider is the only uh, class is only responsible for giving the instance of the page. So I think I have only one. So, method. so you initialize, you set this driver to your uh, web driver static variables. So when I, when this is when this get login page is called, you just just create an instance of login page and send it back to the client, right? So let's go to the login page, and login page is the one that has actual implement implementation detail. I'm sorry. So you get an instance of a web driver, and then here's a user type, uh, type username and type password, verify login error message, right? So actually the login page itself has implementation details of a Selenium. So from test case perspective, there's nothing. It has no, uh, no knowledge about uh, Selenium, find by element, find by ID or whatnot, right? Here it's basically showing this test case. Give me the instance of a page object, a page uh, login page object, and then I'm gonna do the operation. So from here, uh, I just make it as uh, I just make the space class web driver to be um, private, so you can't even access web driver. So you can see you can you cannot access right. So basically, 
that's the sort of code difference. Yeah. So let me go back and explain you the. Uh, let me run the test for you. So same thing. Login page. If you run, yeah, join it, and it'll launch your browser. And it'll type username and password here. Okay, it's loaded it. Right. So if you do a uh, page object pattern uh, test case, it will do the same thing. Okay, launch it. it. And it'll, it'll type username and password over here. Uh, basically the same thing. <clears throat> so uh, the point I'm here, the, the point I'm trying to make here is obviously this code looks much much cleaner and much much easier to understand, right? So you have you get an instance of login page and then you type your name and password. Here uh, you're using this test case actually using Selenium library directly, so you need to know the de implementation detail and, and code looks a little bit uglier as a representation of a test case, right? So obviously, the benefit of having page object parent is when the UI changes, UI changes happen, right? It could be an, you know, ID change. Let's say username field is now become a username instead of input email. You have to change multiple places in your, um, if you use uh, this way. But if you use a <clears throat> page object parents, you can actually modify this particular ID change happen. You go to page class, and you can only modify here. So then your test case just remain the same because your test case is actually the scenario, the representation of user interaction. So uh, that actually make it a little um, less error prone. And second, uh, so you could argue that we could you could actually refactor this guy to put it in a base class or something, but it also actually it'll make it harder if you have a multiple so uh, base classes and you we're gonna have a um, deep class hierarchy because it's, it'll represent login page, registration page, registration page, and all different kind of pages, right? So if you organize it in that way, it'll be much uh, hairy in a way. It's hard to maintain. So that's the basic idea. Page class, get an instance of it, use it. If you go to the next step, you get an instance of page that you want, and you uh, call that natural, natural language-like method, and then you do the operation. That's basically it. Okay, bye.